Welcome to the introduction to photography. In this lesson, we are going to introduce you to using photography in social media using the question and answer format. The objectives for this lesson are to understand why photography is important to your business's web presence. Choose images for social media. Select a program to edit your photos. Choose the correct camera for your needs. The first question we are going to address is why should I use photography for my agricultural business? The average user will visit a website for less than one minute. That's it. Engaging photography and video are often the only reason why a user chooses to stay longer than one minute and actually look at the content of the site. So knowing that, we need photography to engage our customers. The next question we will address is what are your options for getting images to use on your website? There are three ways to get images. You can purchase images from a stock photography website, hire a professional photographer, or take them yourself. We will discuss stock photography first. On stock photo websites, you can search for a specific theme or image. Here we're searching for photographs of Angus cattle. You can choose to search for only photographs or an entire assortment of photographs, videos, and illustrations. It will then pull up images that are sorted by popularity. Once you've found a photograph that fits your needs, you can pay for the rights to use it. Images from stock photography sites are high quality and easy to search for. When compared to the cost of hiring a professional, they are affordable if you want to purchase just a few images. However, there are some disadvantages to stock photography websites. They're not original work. When you search for an image, they're shown to you by popularity. So they're displayed by how many times they've been purchased, downloaded, and used on the web or other print media. Another downside of stock photography is that it can seem impersonal. Stock can't offer the personalization of photographs taken at your own farm, ranch, or business. A couple of stock video sites are iStockPhotos.com and Shutterstock.com. There are others out there if you just do a general search for stock photo websites. You may be thinking, why can't I just search Google and use the free images I find there? Well, these images are someone else's and are probably copyrighted. You would never want to steal someone else's land or livestock, and we certainly don't want to steal someone else's photography either. The second option for getting great images is to hire a professional photographer. A good professional photographer can meet with you and your business and develop a plan for photography. They can capture images that are extremely high quality and unique to your business in a way no one else can. There are some disadvantages. Professional photographers with the right equipment and exceptional skill can be expensive, and you often get what you pay for. There are often image releases, contracts, and copyright agreements that must be signed beforehand. If you do choose to hire a photographer, ask for a complete portfolio before you hire them to get a better understanding of the product that he or she will be delivering for you. You may be at the mercy of the photographer's schedule, which could be problematic if you're working with a time-sensitive issue like harvest or other events. This leads us to the last option for getting images of your business. Take them yourself. There are some advantages to taking them yourself. Taking your own photography is free. It can be done around your own schedule. It also allows you to personalize your product and online presence. Plus, it can be fun and rewarding activity for you and your family. There are some disadvantages. The downside about taking your own pictures is that it will require you to put some thought and time into learning how to take a great photograph, and you will need a high quality digital camera, and need to develop at least a basic level of understanding of composition, lighting, and image editing. The next question we'll address is what type of camera should I use? There's no need to constantly be purchasing a new camera every year but evaluate the current camera you have and see if it's going to get you the quality of images you need to compete with what your customers are seeing. If your camera is more than three to four years old and has fewer than eight megapixels, you might consider upgrading to more current model. If you need to purchase a new camera, there are several options, but commercial photographer Chase Jarvis said it best. The best camera is the one you have with you. There is no rhyme or reason for purchasing a large and expensive DSLR camera if you're going to leave it at home and miss out on opportunities to promote your products, brand, or business. There are two basic types of cameras for you to choose between. Point-and-shoot cameras, 
and DSLR. Point and shoot digital cameras work exactly as the name implies. You point it at what you want to take pictures of, and the camera thinks through the exposure and focus and takes the picture. Point and shoot cameras have advantages and disadvantages over their larger and more capable DSLR counterparts. They are simple and easy to use, affordable, and often offer good image quality for their price point. Compared to the DSLR, they require very little knowledge of photography to take a decent photograph. They are also much smaller in size and will allow you to put them in your pocket, jacket, or carrying bag as you're working. There are some disadvantages too. Their basic user functions can limit creative control and take a one-size-fits-all approach to capturing your images. Point-and-shoot cameras will also have a more difficult time in lower light levels, struggling in capturing movement and an overall lower image quality when compared to the more expensive and larger DSLRs. There are some advantages, obviously. Digital SLRs are the choice of professional photographers. These cameras offer the highest image quality. Many now come weather and dust resistant, which is a plus in agricultural environments. They offer the most amount of creative control to the photographer, which means that the photographer has the ability to make the photograph look exactly how he or she wants to. These cameras perform great in low light and in settings where the subject matter is moving. There are some disadvantages too. Even though DSLRs offer exceptional image quality and user controls, they're considerably more expensive than point and shoot cameras. If you choose to use other modes than automatic capture, they will require some basic understanding of exposure. DSLRs are not small cameras, so their size may keep you from carrying your camera with you and you may miss some photographic opportunities. So you need to be committed to learning these skills in order to make the most out of your investment. The next topic we will address is how do I edit my photographs? All photographs, no matter how good, can use a little help in editing. Though you probably don't need to make too many adjustments, simple changes in white balance, exposure, and contrast can drastically improve almost every image you take. Remember the entire reason for adding quality photography to your website and social media is to actively engage your audience and potential customers. So with this in mind, take a few additional minutes to adjust each image accordingly. Professional, powerful editing software does cost money. Fortunately, if you're on a budget, there are several free online options or even subscription services for you to implement in your business's photography. We will briefly summarize the two most commonly used editing programs while also sharing a free resource. The most common and powerful tool for editing photographs is Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop is the industry standard for photo editing and manipulation. In Photoshop, you can open an image as seen here and apply different adjustments. Here is a level adjustment being applied to correct the brightness of a photograph. You can also change the image to black and white, change the colors, sharpen, and even more. You can do infinitely more in Photoshop than just change the color and exposure of an image. Here we're going to select the grain truck to cut it out and bring it closer, and larger to the foreground by using Photoshop's lasso and copy and paste features. The clone stamp is a very popular tool in Photoshop that allows you to remove distracting objects in an image. When you're done with your image, it's a matter of saving the image to the location and the file format you would like. For the web, you would want to save the file as a JPEG and at 72 dpi, or dots per inch. If you've ever been to a website and the pictures take forever to load, it means that somebody saved them in a much higher format, probably something like 300 dots per inch, which is more what we would use for print. For the web, we want to stick to 72 dpi and JPEG photographs. As you can see, the complexity of the program requires time and dedication to learning its features and will require an up-to-date computer to run the software. Until recently, the cost of this program was out of reach for everyone but the serious photographer. But 
Adobe Now offers Photoshop through a subscription service of $20 a month in one-year commitments. To view more of this software, visit www.adobe.com. You can download a trial version for 30 days to see if it meets your needs. Adobe Lightroom is another program that is incredibly common among professionals and enthusiasts alike. Adobe Lightroom was designed on a simple platform with the goal of editing photographs accurately, powerfully, and quickly. Lightroom displays your photographs in panels like this. You can choose automatic editing functions from the library screen, or you can go to your develop panel for more sensitive control of exposure, color balance, and shadow selection. When you choose to save your image, you can choose the file settings and also the file size when exporting for use for Facebook. When compared to Photoshop, the user controls are much friendlier and the learning curve isn't nearly as steep. Lightroom does not offer the image manipulation options that Photoshop would. It's built more around adjusting the exposure, contrast, and general characteristics of a photograph. However, it's much more affordable than Photoshop and easier to learn. Just like Photoshop, you can visit www.adobe.com and download a 30-day trial for free to see if this program fits your needs. If your budget or need doesn't afford you the luxury of purchasing editing software, there are many online options that offer free services for basic image correction. The free software we will highlight in this tutorial is PicMonkey.com. That's P-I-C-M-O-N-K-E-Y.com. As you can see with this screenshot from PicMonkey, you simply upload your images to the image editor. Once uploaded, you can apply basic adjustments to your images, crop, and rotate. Now that your adjustments have been applied, you can save your pictures to your computer and upload them to social media. The next question we'll be addressing is how do I select images for social media? A profile picture is required on most social media websites. Your profile picture is a direct representation of you and your business. Be intentional when choosing your business profile photo. It should elicit the images, feelings, and characteristics of your business. Think of your profile picture as an image you would put on a business card. This will be the image that people will see when searching for you and your business on sites like Facebook and Twitter. If you're trying to create cohesive and uniform brand, consider having the same profile photo on your Facebook and Twitter pages. Most social media sites will automatically resize your images to use as profile pictures. The cover photo is another photo used in Facebook. It is a lot larger when compared to a profile photo. When selecting an image, use, unique, use a unique image that represents your page and business. This could be a popular product, sale item, or an image that further describes the business. Be creative and experiment with images your audience responds to. There are some guidelines to a cover photo. The cover photo should always be a horizontally aligned photograph that's at least 399 pixels wide. It may not have more than 20% text. The ideal size is 851 pixels wide by 315 pixels tall. So let's review. Quality and engaging photographs are important on your website because they give an image to your business and engage potential customers. The best camera is the one that's with you. Only you can decide if a DSLR is worth the added cost. There are many options for editing your photographs. Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom are great options, though they cost money. PicMonkey is a free resource for you to use. Choose a profile fit picture and cover photo that represent your business accurately.